Hello there, many of Dragonflight's minor patches have put some of the game's major patches to shame when it comes to open world content. In 1007 we saw the addition of the Forbidden Reach, which was in all effects a new zone, and 1015's Time Rifts and Mega Dungeons certainly kept that momentum going. There's a decent amount of coverage for the new 1025 patch out there, but I wanted to dive into a few of the less well-known features that are coming up. After we saved the new world tree, Amir Drusel has emerged from the Emerald Dream into Azeroth, along with a whole new island. Now while this technically appeared in 1025 after we cleared the raid, it's pretty much been empty in game, leaving little or no reason to pay a visit. That is until now. In 1025 it all changes with the creation of Belameth, the new Night Elf capital, and this new capital is Gorgeous, as is the rest of the island. Seeing what they can do with revamping traditional old world night elf architecture and what high res versions can look like really makes me hope that Blizzard will do more to revamp other parts of the old world in future. Now Blizzard haven't been completely blind to the need to tie the capital into the rest of Azeroth and they've provided portals to a bunch of night elf areas including Darkshaw, Hyjal and Valshara in Belameth and a two way link to Feathermoon Stronghold in the harbour to the north. The rest of us aren't forgotten either with a two way link between Belameth and the new wing in Stormwind's portal room that opened up in 10.2.0. One of the announced features is a new storyline reclaiming Gonaeus. While Blizzard has managed to keep this story under wraps, over in the PTR, Gonaeus City has undergone a mini revamp with a load of new NPCs, including an innkeeper that replaced the almost deserted area that's currently in game. I'm a big fan of WoW's races having a home location, so I'm super happy about this. The new portal room in Stormwind actually has two empty portal pads, and with one of those being used for Bellameth, I'm hoping that this storyline will open up the other one to Golnaeus as well. The north of the Eastern Kingdoms has long been a bit awkward to reach for the Alliance, so this would be a very welcome addition to the game. Just after the patch drops, we're getting the Outland Cup, a new dragon riding world event. Outland has always been a super cool area and I'm looking forward to seeing this. Now along with the cup comes some new rewards, by far the most interesting of which is the manuscript of endless possibilities. This item will unlock the option of randomising the appearance of your dragon every time you summon it. As a long time user of random mount summoning, I've been getting a little bored with the same 67 mounts in Dragonflight and having a different skin every time is something I'm really looking forward to. Until now I've struggled to get very excited by the dragon customization system but this makes it a lot more interesting to me and I'm planning to put a bit of time into collecting some of those manuscripts I don't already have. In February, we're getting this year's Love is in the Air event, and it's getting a few new rewards to collect, including new witchy transmog sets, crowns, weapons, and two new mounts. The Heartseeker Mana Ray, which will cost 270 love tokens, and the Forensship Fox, which looks like it's going to be in the trading post. There's also Dragon Riding customizations, not only for Love is in the Air, but also the Lunar Festival. Also in the calendar is the Hearthstone 10th Anniversary March. We don't really know much about what this will involve, but some hints have already been data mined. First up is the Fiery Hearthsteed, a recolour of the original Hearthsteed. My guess is that this will be earned in a similar way to the original by playing some Hearthstone. The other mount is the Compass Rose, a flying dismount. The source of this is described as a world event, so I'm thinking it will probably be some kind of Hearthstone themed event in WoW, maybe similar in idea to the recent Warcraft Rumble event. We're also getting some more new character customizations. Trolls get a few hair colours and Dranite get a new dark skin colour. Now, on their own, these aren't very exciting changes, but it does seem that the team are very slowly adding new customizations in as they get ready, which for me is a good way to expand our options, as these changes will all add up over time. Warlocks are also getting some love with a bunch of new demon customizations. We're seeing the return of the Observer model for the Fell Hunter that was recently and quite controversially removed. It's good to see that the team are listening to player feedback and being willing to roll back in decisions like this. But it's not just simply adding the old model back, there's actually a bunch of brand new models coming. Along with that, there's also a new set of Dark Glare and Demonic Tyrant models. 
Along with the more major features that I'm not going to cover in this video, 1025 is looking like being one of the biggest minor patches ever and I'm super excited to dig into it this week. But what about you? What's the feature that you're most excited for? Tell me in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this new video, there's going to be lots more coverage of the PTR and new releases in this channel. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as a new video goes live. And give this a thumbs up below. It makes a huge difference to how visible YouTube makes these videos. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.